Let's look at root locus plots. A root locus plot is a plot of the roots of a closed loop system as a gain k varies between zero and infinity. For example, suppose I've got a cubic, a plant right here. Get these pins right. With a feedback gain k, what happens as k varies between zero and infinity? If you do the algebra, the closed loop system happens to be 10k over s, s plus 5, s plus 10, plus 10k. Um, essentially what I'm doing is finding the roots to a cubic as k varies. One way to do that is in MATLAB. MATLAB has got a neat function called RLTool. I can input a system G, tell it I want to plot the root locus, and what comes up is this graph. This shows the roots of that cubic as k varies between 0 and infinity. And I can sit there and move the spot around and say, suppose I want my roots to be right here, k should be 12.8. That's kind of neat. What our old tool is also kind of useful for is it shows off how poles and zeros affect the root locus plot. Suppose I add a pole right there. Poles repel root locus plots, zeros attract. If I take that pole and move it around, as it goes way far left, it's not having much effect on the root locus on the right. As I bring that pole to the right, it's pushing the root locus plot away, it's repelling. That's what poles do. If I look at zeros, poles repel, zeros attract. If I take the zero and slide it around, I'm attracting the root locus plot, pulling it towards the zero. I can also have complex poles and complex zeros. For example, here I've got a complex zero. As I move that complex zero around and grab it, you see the zeros attracting the root locus. And there's a thing called an approach angle. That's the angle at which the root locus plot comes into the zero. That's RL tool, kind of a fun tool to play with. What I'd like to look at is how do you come up with that root locus plot? How do you sketch the root locus? Well, to start with, let's take the simple case. I've got a cubic, k varies between zero and infinity, find the roots. Let's start with k equals zero, the simplest case. Fairly obviously, if k equals zero, this term goes away, and I'm just left with the open loop poles, poles at zero, minus five, minus 10. That's how you start the root locus plot. Put an x where the open loop poles are. If you had zeros, put an o for zero. Next, uh, do some algebra, bring the 10k to the right, divide by 10. What I wind up with is an amplitude and an angle condition. The two sides have to match, meaning the amplitude on the left is equal to k. That's how you find your gain k. The angle condition is actually what you use to sketch the root locus. Since the function is equal to minus k, or k at 180 degrees, the angle of this term must be 180 degrees. So let's look at what is the, what points on the S-plane satisfy the amplitude condition? Um, let's start with the graphical methods. Let's look at the term S plus five. The term S plus five means I take the vector plus five, that's this guy right here, add two at the vector S, meaning this guy right here is S plus five. The angles have to add up. When you multiply complex numbers, the angles add. What that means is that some of the angles from your poles if I had zeros, zeros to the opposite, minus the sum of the angles from zeros must add to 180 degrees. That in essence is root locus plot. Angles have to add up to 180. If I look at the real axis, the angle from a pole that's to the left is zero degrees. The point right here, that angle is zero degrees. Angle from a pole to the right is 180 degrees. 180 degrees, angles have kind of a weird property. If I add an odd number of 180 degrees, I wind up at 180 degrees, it's clock math. So in essence, the real axis loci are all points in the root locus that have an odd number of poles or zeros to the right. Um, next, let's take the case when k goes to infinity. As k goes to infinity, 
S fairly obviously has to go to infinity as well at some angle. That angle is called the asymptote angle. Here I've got three poles. When you multiply complex numbers, the angles add. So I've got three times the some angle phi equals 180 degrees, solve for phi. And you wind up with phi is plus minus 60 degrees. And kind of an odd case is at 180 degrees also. Three times 180 is 180. Uh, essentially, you can find that. I can always add or subtract 360 degrees and get the same angle. So let n be 1. Uh, phi is 1 third of 540 degrees, gives you 180 degrees. The asymptote angles then would just be 3 times phi is 180. Phi is plus minus 60 degrees and 180 degrees. The asymptote intersect, where it's going to hit. Uh, where you draw the asymptotes is the center of mass. Essentially, when you take off to infinity, I've got essentially three poles so close to each other, it doesn't really matter. The center of mass is where those asymptotes take off at your plus 60 degrees, minus 60, and 180. And in this case, the center of mass was at minus 5. So I'm left with this root locus plot. I've got the real axis loci between 0 and minus 5, minus 10, minus infinity. Uh, my asymptotes, I've got three of them. So the asymptote angle is at plus minus 60 degrees, 180 degrees. And the center mass is at minus 5. What's going to happen now is this pole takes off to the left. This pole takes off to the right. At some point, they come together and go off to the asymptote. That right there is called a breakaway point. That'd be useful to calculate. To find the breakaway point, a couple ways. First, uh, the breakaway point is the point at which the sensitivity of G of S, whenever G of S is zero, sensitivity of G of S is infinity. That's the hard way. A uh, numerical solution is the point just above the real axis where the angles add up to 180 degrees. And it's actually 180 degrees. Or Roughly, it's the midpoint by asymmetry between two poles that are repelled by poles and attracted by zeros. That gives you this. The midpoint between 0 and minus 5 is at 2.5. The pole at minus 10 repels. Gives you the breakaway point right around here, around minus 2.1. That tells you the root locus point is going to take off at minus 2.1 and go to the asymptote. This is another useful point to find in sketching the root locus. That's the geomega crossing. Geomega crossing has no hard solution, numerical solution, or you have to find it numerically. Essentially, what you're doing is angles have to add up to 180, meaning that this angle, 90 degrees, plus this angle, plus this angle, has to add up to 180. That's equal to 90 degrees plus, plus two arctangents. Arctangent is a nasty nonlinear function, has no closed form solution. You have to solve that numerically. Once you get that, you get the j mega crossings. All of that together lets you sketch the root locus plot. And again, what you wind up with is what we saw in MATLAB, a system where zeros attract the root locus, I have a hard time with this, and poles repel.